The Apple Vision Pro is finally here, and if you don't have the spare time to watch all the YouTube videos and reviews that are coming out now, fear not. I've summarized the main points from some of YouTube's biggest tech players, and you can catch them all here in under 15 minutes. So let's jump straight into it. When watching Max Tex's fantastic review, his first impressions that he immediately thought the pass-through was gonna be better quality, which was a huge alarm bell to me. And in his words, he said, it's very much like watching an iPhone recording of the environment you're in. That said, he did state that it was way better than the Quest 3 and any other headsets he's used, which seems to be a, a common sentiment amongst all the reviewers and people that have bought the Apple Vision Pro. He was, however, visibly impressed with the eye tracking feature and how well it works. Max Tech and other reviewers have complained about the fact that the field of view is not as wide as people would have hoped and a few people are very much saying that the field of view is worse than the Quest 3 which my understanding is gives it a very much like a binocular feeling when you're looking at it with dark black areas around your periphery vision which is a bit of a shame that we haven't made huge leaps there in terms of FOV. He like many others has complained about the fact that using your phone is kind of blurry and hard to read and I think he summarized it quite well in that the digital fully immersive experiences kind of VR as we know it is much better than the pass-through or AI kind of use case. Brian Tong posted a whopping 55 minute review of his first week or two with the Apple Vision Pro. In a nutshell, his one word that he used to describe the AVP was immersive. He said that the M2 processor feels more than sufficient to keep everything running smoothly at 90 hertz and that you'll never notice any dropped frames as a result of that. Sometimes you can see dropped frames, he says, only when you're screen recording. So the experience itself is perfect, but when you're using screen recording as well, you can sometimes notice some choppiness in the recording. He also said you'll definitely be relying on your voice more than your hands. I think we've seen that in a few videos now that the text input using the keyboards is a little bit tricky and a bit quirky. Brian also said that when you're gaming, the clarity and resolution holds true even as you're scaling and resizing things and moving them around your space. And in his words, he said that it will be the biggest and best gaming display you'll likely have in your house. He had very high praise of the video consumption experience. So watching movies in Disney Plus and, and in Apple TV, my take of his review was that that was clearly his highlight, was the movie watching experience. And he also stated that despite being a massive 3D movie aficionado, it was by far the best 3D movie watching experience he's ever experienced, which is very high praise from someone who prides themselves on being a 3D movie connoisseur. He highlights that it not only supports high frame rate, but also high dynamic range and true 4K 3D. Whereas with most televisions, you've been limited to 1080p 3D so far. He said that spatial video is best captured with your iPhone instead of the headset itself. So the quality perhaps is not as good when using the headset. So if, you, if you're into spatial videos and that wants to be one of your core use cases, he highly recommends using your iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max to capture spatial videos. With regards to battery life, Brian said it takes about an hour and a half to go from zero to four, which is pretty good. Now onto some of the drawbacks that Brian noticed in his review. He complained that there's no app customization on the home screen, which is very reminiscent to the very first iPhone and iOS, how you couldn't really customize much at all. So perhaps that will change in future versions of Vision OS. No YouTube and Netflix apps, although that's not really the fault of the Apple Vision Pro. Hopefully they'll come later. You can use them in the browser for now. And Another thing that he said was a drawback was that you cannot hot swap batteries. So if you don't have the means to plug it into the wall whilst you're using it and the battery does die, you can't simply switch over batteries and maintain the experience. You do have to power the Vision Pro down whilst you change battery. He also said it takes around 30 to 40 seconds for the Vision Pro to boot up, which I found quite surprising given the M2 chip. That's a lot slower than M2 powered laptops and iPads. One of his other drawbacks was that bright scenes or mixed scenes, so perhaps dark scenes with very bright elements in them, cause reflections within the Apple Vision Pro itself, which is not something that VR frequencies would actually find surprising. Moving over to Marquez of MKBHD fame. Marquez actually posted two videos, one which was an unboxing and one which was more of a deep dive review. Highly recommend both of them. If you do have time, they are fantastic videos. I felt like his reviews kind of centered around the fact that it is the best pass through and clarity you'll get from a VR headset so far, but they're still not perfect. He spent a little bit of time elaborating on the fact that it is very much a VR headset, despite the fact it's kind of marketed as AR and spatial and things like that. It's still at its core, the hardware is a VR headset. He spoke about how it's a lot of metal and glass, so it is quite heavy, which we already knew. Marquez, along with a lot of other reviewers, have praised how good the speakers are. If you're at home and on your own, you probably don't actually need to use AirPods because the spatial audio is pretty good. However, they do leak out, so people around you can hear them. So if you're using them in a public space or perhaps you don't want to disrupt a partner or someone else in your room, 
AirPods will be the better option. Marquez and others were really impressed by the fact that when you kind of place a window somewhere in the Vision Pro, it stays there locked in that space so you can walk around, move around your house, go to a different room, come back, and the kind of virtual television you've created will be exactly where you left it along with your Mac mirror displays and other windows. Marquez mentioned that he typically got around two to four hours of battery life, four definitely at the upper end. I'm not sure if he quite reached four, but he did quote two to four. And as I said, he you know he really praised how the, the pass-through video quality is the best so far of any device he's used, but a lot of reviewers are saying the same thing. Whilst it's the best, you are still very much looking through a display and looking at a video feed of your environment. You won't be fooled into thinking you're just looking at your environment. You will always know that you're looking at a video feed, basically. To demonstrate how good that pass-through quality is though he, he showed himself actually playing a game of ping pong which I think is really impressive that demonstrates that the latency and the quality is pretty spot on to be able to play something as twitchy as table tennis or ping pong. Onto some of the drawbacks that Marquez noticed. He said there's a noticeable restriction when it comes to looking at things up close, like holding your phone too close to your face or text or you know moving things too close to your field of vision. Things get a little bit blurry and drop off. He said one of the quirks of the Vision OS UI is that to access the control center, you have to physically move your head up and look to your ceiling. Um, you can't just glance with your eyes, which I think is a little bit of a drawback. Not a great UI design showcase, so hopefully they change that in future versions of Vision OS. Text input is a huge quirk. Similar to Brian, I think he kind of feels that you're going to be using your voice certainly more than you're going to be typing. Marquez and others do talk about how the fact that it seems to lack a killer app at the moment, although in a similar vein, they all very much praise the movie watching and content consumption experience. So perhaps that is the killer app for the time being. Using the Vision Pro as an extension of his MacBook was very much one of Marquez's favorite experiences in the Vision Pro, although he did notice the drawback. You can only mirror one display from your MacBook. Now moving over to iJustine, now she was notably more enthusiastic about this as as she always is for Apple products, and she spent a lot more time showing the Vision Pro in use. My takeaways from her video were that the UI feels incredibly intuitive and setup was a breeze. You do get slight eye fatigue from focusing on things in Vision Pro. So I just seen actually noted that she can't really use it for more than about 45 minutes. She also noted that the best use case was for looking at a wider view of things slightly further away from you rather than having windows kind of squashed up close to your face. One of the many quirks and drawbacks that a lot of people are noticing is how uncanny the personas are. Her words were kind of that it looks like you and it sounds like you, but it's just not you. And interestingly, I just think said it's completely changed her view of 3D movies. So whereas you had Brian Tong, who was already a 3D movie fan, who says this is the best experience yet, Justine actually said that she hated 3D movies before. However, this is changing her opinion on them. That again is quite high praise for the 3D movie watching experience. The Wall Street Journal did a great kind of video where their reviewer used the Apple Vision Pro for up to 24 hours, including a brief stint skiing in them, which is not recommended by Apple. The reviewer also showed you what it's like to be able to use the Apple Vision Pro for cooking, having a recipe in front of you and placing timers above certain pots and dishes, which is a wonderful demonstration of how useful this could be for applications in the kitchen. And quite impressively, as with other reviewers, she demonstrated that you can place a timer above, say for example, a pot on your stove, walk away from it, go into a different room, come back and that timer will be physically located above that pot still. On kind of quirks and drawbacks, the reviewer noted that typing is incredibly frustrating and slow. The FaceTime personas were not great, as everyone's saying. She also noted that low light text is very hard to read. So if your screen brightness isn't particularly high on your iPhone or your iPad, it's going to be incredibly hard to read. Likewise, if you're not in a well-lit room, the reviewer also noted that it's painful to wear for long periods and that it kind of has every characteristic of a first generation product. And then last but not least, we have what is possibly one of the more critical or I suppose negative reviews of the Apple Vision Pro. And that was from The Verge. My takeaway from The Verge's review was that whilst they consider it to be leaps and bounds better than the competition, it still has a long way to go. They praised the build quality, liken it to design elements from the iPhone 6, from the Apple Watch, but they were one of the first reviewers to complain about the FOV and how it's noticeably worse than the Quest 3. They also noticed and made a kind of digital recreation of that not only is the FOV not as wide as the Quest 3, but actually the periphery quality of the image before the FOV gets cut off has chromatic aberrations and kind of digital artifacts that make it not the best quality around the edges. So the center of your viewpoint seems to be the sweet spot for clarity and visual fidelity. These drawbacks actually led to The Verge giving the Apple Vision Pro a very controversial 7 out of 10 final score. So then what's the conclusion then from these fantastic YouTubers and their excellent first reviews? Well, I think it's clear to say that it's a mixed bag. The common themes amongst all of them are that the pass-through is the best yet, but not perfect. It's not going to fool you into thinking that you are just looking at your environment with your eyes. You are very much looking at a screen or a video recording of your environment. That theme was common amongst all of them. Virtually everyone is noting that the typing experience 
experience is very much only for perhaps entering a short password or replying to a very quick message. You're not gonna be writing a script or doing your homework on the Apple Vision Pro's keyboard anytime soon. A lot of them focused on the fact that it's very heavy and certainly not comfortable to wear with the solo band. You need the dual band that has the support going across the head to make it a more comfortable experience for longer uses. Universally, everyone praises the movie watching experience, especially 3D movies and the immersive environments created by the Disney app. And another common theme seems to be that the fully immersive experiences or when you're not using pass-through, the fidelity is fantastic and certainly better than any VR headset before it. There's kind of a mixed bag on what people think of the battery life and the fact that you can't hot swap. And I think it's also a mixed bag that using your MacBook, using it to extend your MacBook's display to have a huge kind of 200 inch MacBook screen at 4K, whilst fantastic and could be the killer app, the fact that you're limited to one display also negates kind of some of the benefits of having this kind of display that spans all around you. Um, if you're typically a two or three monitor user, going back to one even bigger monitor might not be the best use case for you. On top of what some of the YouTube and typical outlets are saying, feedback and reviews from standard users are starting to pour in now on the likes of Reddit. There are a lot of people thinking about returning it because it's not quite what they think Apple marketed it as. And for everyone that's returning it, there seems to be a lot more people saying it's fantastic and it is the future of spatial computing. So very much a mixed bag. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Unfortunately, it is only sold in the US for the moment and I don't have any plans to go there right now. When I do, I'll certainly be posting an in-depth review of it. I hope this was helpful and it saved you a lot of time watching the hours of reviews that are already out there. That said, I do recommend giving those reviews a watch. If you do find the time, some of them are a bit longer, but they are definitely worth it if you need a more in-depth understanding of what the Vision Pro is like. I've been George. This has been the Owners Club. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this, please hit like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.